Most of the people don't know the origins of the so-called social non-profit organization. English people think they have invented it, but US people believe it to be their own creation. A majority of professional and researchers think that the non-profit or self-sex or birth was connected with the welfare state crisis in the last decades. But in our historical investigation, we discovered that the real origin is very different and really surprising. It's not in the UK, it's not in the US, and not connected with the welfare. In fact, the first forms of non-religious independent social organization are referred to be active in the late Middle Age in Italy, right before Dante Alighieri, in 1244 in Florence. The Misericordie was born in 1244, 20 years before Dante Alighieri, and it's still existing in Florence, basically doing the same things. It was a kind of social aid service provider organization made of volunteers who helped people. Moreover, it was recognized as sign partially funded and collaborated with the local government to prevent sanitary problems like epidemics and to conduct a census of population, what in Italy we say anagrafe. Its members were both rich people and common citizens, and the governance was democratic. In more details, in uh, 1407, Misericordia invented and established the civil registry because people didn't use to communicate new birth to local authorities. They were communicating to Misericordia because they had a closer relationship with this organization and trusted it more. It was like an actual social innovation initiative, finally adopted by the local government 50 years later. We found a public act dated 1499 from, from the Florence government who appointed and funded Misericordia to help in the health care and hygiene of the population and prevent epidemics. This was basically an informal welfare state system to which citizens and local governments participated, supporting and funding it. And what about Spain? Spain was the second. Uh, in Spain, the beginning was around the half of the 16th century. Poor and marginalized people were at risk of rebellion and spreading diseases, so it became a social problem that needed to be managed. There was a need to manage social order without violence, while leaving rich people living undisturbed, allowing them to save their souls through philanthropy. So, it is in the period that independent social organization started to appear aimed to healthcare assistance, education, saving children, rehabilitation of prostitutes and marginalized people in general. And what about the UK? The UK, in our historical investigation, was the third after Spain, after Italy and Spain. Decades later, in London, Thomas Coram, born in 1668, founded the founding hospital in which is said to be the world's first incorporated charity that offered hospitality to unwanted children. A wonderful story I told in one of my posts on Block for Change. Back in the 18th century, London was a filthy city where three out of four children died under the age of five where people were drinking gin to avoid contaminated water in the public house, later called pub. A huge problem was that most of the abandoned kids were illegitimate children, their mothers were prostitutes, and for this reason were not accepted by the church. Captain Coram started a 20 years campaign to obtain a royal charter from the king, but no one baked him at the beginning. So he decided to look for support among rich aristocratic ladies. In 1729, the Duchess of Somerset signed Thomas' petition to the king. Soon, other rich and titled ladies signed it too. Thomas presented his petition to the king, George II. 
This time the king granted the royal charter and Thomas was able to start raising money for his hospital. At this stage, the new challenge was finding enough funds to actually build the hospital. After his advocacy campaign, Cora had engaged in a very long fundraising campaign. A lot more people than he had thought of were willing to back his project. In 1741, the founding hospital was ready to welcome kids. We are at the end of our historical excursus. So in the end, we can really say that non-profit has a long history, a tradition of collaboration with local institutions and deep roots in the local communities. It worked from the very beginning not only on emergency, but also on prevention. It had to look for funds and be independent both from the governments and the church. It also needed social entrepreneurs like Thomas Coran for its startups. A long history full of passion, innovation and social change. A history that we all keep on making together.